Somebody say to God be the glory. My, 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 my. Song in 95 and still blessing us in 18. Yeah, yeah. There would be no you and me. It wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. There would be no heavens Nothing would be here. There would be nothing but the master. But, but, he brought us. God be the glory. My, my, my. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Forever and, and ever. As long as man, as long as man is on earth, God will get a praise. He sure will. As long as the angels are in heaven, he sure God will. will get a praise. To God. To God. You are to sing from your soul. You are to live from your soul. Ever. Ever. I'll praise you. Let's take it home. Ever I praise you. Wow. My, my. Ever I praise you. Okay, that's enough. First Samuel 16. As long as I have breath and understanding. Sometimes you think about the memories of your loved ones. You, you see things that remind you of your loved ones that have gone on to be with Jesus. Every now and then a little sadness hits you. But you have to remind yourself, they with Jesus. And they don't want to come back to you. <laughs> so you can best believe uh, when the Lord called me home, I ain't stutting y'all. You need to hear it now. Once the Lord called me, I told my wife, don't bring no body up in here. Don't bring no casket up in here. Cremate me. I'm gone. My spirit going on. Don't bring no, put a picture of me up in here. <laughs> But don't put my body up in here. I ain't stutting y'all. I'm letting y'all know now. I love you right now. But when I go to heaven, I ain't stutting y'all. <laughs> so you might well tell your neighbor, when, right, you know, when Pastor go on, he said he ain't stutting you. You might well stop all that crying. He said he ain't stutting you. <laughs> up there with God, I ain't. Boy, preaching with me. I'm going to take you from over there by Angie. Y'all too. Y'all, you might have to, you might have to move. <laughs> we like to have a good time. No, no, no. Church should be boring. You have to have a good time. You know, um, it's amazing that song was played uh, today because uh, yesterday, uh, the Pastor Callahan's right hand man uh, in the sound was with him from day one. Uh, he went home to be with the Lord yesterday. They had his home going uh, yesterday, matter of fact, so I couldn't make it. So we celebrate life. You better appreciate every moment that you have with somebody so you don't have to say, I wish I could have. I wish I should have. First Samuel, this ain't no funeral. First Samuel 16, uh, verse 6 and 7, then we're going to come back up. We want to talk about the heart, the heart. How is your heart? Father, we always want to acknowledge you because we realize we could do nothing without you. Please speak to our hearts. Give us what we need to know and help us to live what we know. We thank you now so much for what you have done in, in our lives and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I was talking to someone, a family member, on yesterday, Friday, and so that family member, I could tell that they wasn't in the best of spirit. And so I asked them, I said, you okay? And they, you know, they, when, you, when you're hurting, you kind of put that little cry on the inside and you try to hold it back, you know. So I said, you okay? They, yeah, I'm fine. I said, you sure? <laughs> like, oh, God, I should have left it alone. <laughs> you about to make me cry. I don't even know what I'm crying about. <laughs> But, but sometimes people cry because of the mistakes they keep making. They won't change their heart, won't change their mind. Have you ever been around somebody that are doing something on a regular basis that's really hurting them and harming them? 
and you got the answers and you're trying to help them and you say, why you keep doing this? And, and you know, and then they kind of fight you back, defending themselves. You know, it kind of bothers me when I know I got to an answer for people and then they try to fight me back with, by being defensive, you know, uh, 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 trying to justify why they do what they do. And some of the hardest people to reach is family. It, it's almost impossible to reach, especially if it's a child. You know, most parents, I, I ain't going to even say most parents. I'm just going to jump out on the limb and say all parents, even though I know it's most parents. <laughs> parents who really love their children, they have a greater desire for their children than the children have for themselves. The children live in the moment. Parents live for the future. Children only wants to have fun right now. And they, and they kind of live haphazardly and don't realize the danger sometimes of their lifestyle. All they know is, I'm having fun. And then the people they're hanging around, we as a parent can see that you're hanging around a hula. You hanging around a thug? You, you, don't you see? I could. That's a, you know, don't you see who that is? <laughs> and and a child realized uh, that's my friend. I'm enjoying my friend. You know, ain't nothing wrong with my friend. Well, your friend smoking dope, but that's still my friend. Your friend done robbed somebody. Yeah, but that's my friend. Your friend on a run from the police. You always coming up against my friend. <laughs> And don't realize that we as parents, we have a greater concern and a desire for your future than you do. We can see greatness in you. We as parents can see what you are capable of becoming. And, and most parents, hopefully all parents, want their child to be better than them. You know, I can look at my parents of old, and, and they wish and pray for better for me. And I have it, and I'm doing it, and I'm living it. I'm living better than my parents live. I have more than what my parents had. But what I really want that my parents had was a great heart for God. They didn't have the cars. They didn't have the house, they, you know, the money. But they sure had a heart, a praying heart and a praying spirit. They loved themselves some Jesus. My great-grandmother is who I was raised by, my great-grandmother and great-grandfather, my great-grandparents. That's my true parents as far as I'm concerned because they adopted me as an infant. And... Uh, I would come home 3 o'clock in the morning, and, and my great-grandmother would get out of her bed and get on her knees and start praying and pray out loud and just mess up my high and, and pray out loud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm high as a kite just walking through the door. You know, I'm grown now, you know, but I still stay with mama. <laughs> so I'm grown, right? And, and so I'm coming home 3 o'clock in the morning, a little high, a little drunk, and, and mama would get on her knees and say, Lord, I just want to thank you. But let my baby come home safely. I say, oh, man, mama, great day. It don't take all that because I'm living dangerously. I don't have a relationship with Christ, and I don't realize how dangerous the world is. But mama do. Now that I'm older, now that I got children, I do understand what mama was doing now. I try my best not to be, you know, uh, uh, nervous when my children are out in the streets. And then when I do see my child, see, parent, children, can I, can I bless you, children? Let me tell you what your parents are doing when they see you. When, when you go away and go out and party or go spend a night at somebody's house and then you come home, guess, guess what they do? They're looking you up and down. <laughs> they want to see, do you look the way you left? <laughs> but if you come back different, you know, and I was talking to a family member, I was like, you know, you all right. You know, really what I'm saying is you ain't all right. You all right? You look different. You, you, you skinny. You all right? And so, you know, me being an ex-street man, so I look for signs. I know what I'm looking for. And so I'm looking for them signs that are, you know, yeah, you got some of them symptoms. You all right? <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me, Lord. That's mine, Lord. That's mine. Lord, help me. Pray. Lord, please touch that right there. Now I understand what mama was praying for. See, mama was praying for me. Now it's my time to pray for somebody. And, and so, but my heart got to be greater towards God than it is towards my children. My heart got to be greater towards God than it is towards my children. And, and what I'm saying is, is that we as parents care so much for the welfare of our children that we'll do almost anything for them, even at, no matter how wrong they can be sometimes. 
with, I, I made up my mind. I said, I don't care what you ask for. You ain't getting nothing. Nothing. I walk around like a gorilla. Nothing. I was telling everybody in the neighborhood, ain't getting nothing out of me. <laughs> I went to see the movie Rampage. I said, yeah, that's me. I'm a gorilla. Nothing. There, there. What? Yeah. How much you need? <laughs> that gorilla went on out the window. <laughs> but because of the love. Do we have that same attitude towards God? We have to learn even the more how to fall in love with Jesus. If you don't keep falling in love with him, then what becomes is a relationship that's dormant. Now he's just a God in your mind, not a God in your heart. See, uh, there's been times in 32 years of my marriage, there's been times in my marriage, and I, don't get me wrong, I love my wife, but there's been times I wasn't in love. Let me come over here and ain't going there's been times I just wasn't in love. I don't care. Whatever. I come home when I feel like it. Uh, you come home. You, you ain't got to come home. I don't care. You know, <laughs> you, know you can drop dead for all I care. That, but that was a wrong mentality because I didn't keep falling in love. I just loved from a distance. I knew you were my wife in my head, but I didn't want you to be my wife in my heart. I wouldn't do nothing for you. I won't open the door for you. I won't close the door. I won't pick up what you dropped off. I won't pay your bill. I don't care. I just know we married. It's quiet, so I must be talking to somebody. <laughs> There's been times I just didn't care. So I'm just, I just know I'm married to you. I come home when I feel like it. I leave when I feel like it. I come home, don't speak. I leave and don't speak. Eat your food and go to bed. Don't even say your food was good. Don't even care because I had a heart, a head love, but not a heart love. Now, granted, I ain't want nothing to happen to you, maybe. <laughs> but I was just going through some changes. So what I had to do was is sit down because then I started noticing outside people were looking better and making me feel better than what I had at home. You don't mind if I be real with you, do you? Let me come over here because real people I believe over here. <laughs> outside folks, because, see, I gave my allegiance to outside. I made outside look better than inside even though inside was treating me better. Inside had my back. But because of my flesh and my mentality, I just didn't care. So I would always give my allegiance to something in the streets. Then I had to wake up. But I had to wake up with the word of God. Somebody had to teach me and minister to me, but I had to have an open spirit to want to receive it. See, that's why many people ain't growing, because they don't want to have an open heart. I want to hear the word, but I don't want to do the word. I love Jesus from over there, but I just don't love Jesus this close. So, so what happened was, after I started receiving the messages, receiving the word of God, then what happened was, I realized, wait a minute, before I get right with my wife, let me get right with him. This, I don't care who you try to date. I don't care who look good. I don't care who you marry. If it ain't right up with first, this right here, sideways, it ain't going to never work. It's going to feel good for the moment. It's always going to feel good for the moment, but when you get that right relationship, listen, 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 when your relationship is right with God, even when this is wrong, you know that God put this together, and you know this is going to change eventually. It's going to get better eventually, as long as I stay connected this way. And so the more, the more I kept getting closer to God, and man, it was a struggle, because my God, them streaks was calling my name. Ooh, boy, I mean, ooh, I can't tell too much. I'll talk to you privately, okay? <laughs> I got too many people here judging already. So now, the more I kept getting closer to God, it was struggles because my outside forces was pulling on me harder. I can see my outside forces. All I can do is walk by faith with my spiritual God. What I can see looked better than what I was going through, what I was knowing with my relationship with God. So the more I kept going to church, oh, what a struggle. Oh, my God. I would leave church and then go and sin. I'm trying to figure out where the sin crowd at. I think it's over him. So, so I would leave church because that, that struggle was so hard. That tug was so hard and strong pulling on me. But I knew I was wrong. So I didn't care about trying to get it right with my wife. I cared about trying to get it right with my God. Yeah. Father, I need you for real. And then when you have an altar call, I would run to the altar.
Lord, I'd lift my hands up because I know I'm wrong, but this thing sure feel good. But I need your help, Jesus. I need your help because this ain't right. And the stronger I got with God, then all of a sudden I realized, you know what? Let me make this marriage work. It's only going to work whenever I put something in it. <clears throat> oh, let me come on in. <clears throat> I don't know who I'm talking to somebody. I don't, I'm, talk, I'm trying to help somebody because somebody on the brink of like whatever. I don't care. I don't care what you do. No, I'm trying to let you know. The problem is you're putting too much of your heart into this relationship, or maybe you're taking some of your heart out of the relationship, and you need to get your heart right with God first. If you get right with God, then everything that's going to line right on up with you because it's the will of God. you got to understand the will of God. But see, you got a will too. All of us got a will. I got a will to want to do some things that don't even compare to what God will is. I ain't even studying sometimes God will because of my will. You know, I, okay, let me, get, can I be, yeah, I'm going to be, I don't care what you think. So anyway, you know, if I, if I go to the beach and I see something that's got on, you know, something, something, well, nothing, nothing, and, uh, and it looked good to me, and I say, I ain't going to look. They walk right by me. I say, I ain't look. The devil is a lie. I ain't looking in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. I ain't looking. Lord, I ain't looking. Lord, I said I ain't going to look. <laughs> because the flesh, the Bible say the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. And if we keep tapping into the flesh, we're going to always stay weak. Let me come on. If you stay in the flesh, you're going to always stay weak. You want to know why you keep failing? Because you stay in the flesh. You want to know why you stay broke? Because you're in the flesh. You want to know why your marital problems? Because you're in the flesh. If you just fight a good fight of yeah. fight a good fight of faith. See, you know, you know, I, I know how to fight some men. And, and, and but but the spirit world, I'm learning how to fight that. Because some people can make my spirit upset. But the Bible told me to fight a good fight of faith, not fight a good fight of people. And what is faith? Faith is the word of God. The more the word is produced, the stronger I get. So when situations pop up, then guess what I use? I use the word against this situation. So every time I get sick, I use a word against this situation. Every time I have a relationship problem, I use the word against this situation. Every time I have a financial problem, I use the word against this situation. We got to stand on the word and not the situation. A lot of your arguments can uh, end if you just learn how to talk to, talk to the spirit world. I got quiet. A lot of your physical arguments with each other, they really can end. You ain't got to be arguing with your children. You can see that in crazy. Let me, let me reverse it. Children, you can see your mom and dad acting crazy too. Children, that's your, that was your opportunity to say amen, but you didn't say it. I gave you a chance. Now you can't say it now. Listen. You can avoid a lot of arguments if you just learn how to speak to that spirit world. Because the spirit world, the unclean spirit, the devil is always motivating people to do wrong. So if we can just learn to quit fighting with our husbands, fighting with our wives, fighting with our mamas, fighting with our daddies, and fight with that spirit. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't like that spirit. I bind that spirit in Jesus' name. See, I go in my children's room and plead the blood. If I smell something funky in that room, I lift the windows. When I smell some spirits in that room, I lift Jesus. Amen. See, I, I done learned something from my grandmama. I go in that room and pray, baby. I bind them spirits. You ain't going to live in this house. You ain't going to have control of my children. I bind that spirit. And then when I feel like I'm mad with my wife, I bind me. You got to learn how to bind you sometimes. Every now and then, an attitude will pop up. My wife and I we was going to the, uh, uh, Greensboro to a banquet yesterday, and boy, we were looking, we were looking sharp. I'm going to say it myself. We were looking sharp. I looked over there. I said, girl, you look good. She said, what you say? Huh? I can't hear you. I had the radio loud. I had on my very white voice. Maybe she didn't hear me, but I got upset. <laughs> I said, you look good. Huh? You must be getting old. <laughs> so now an hour and a 20 minute pleasant drive that turn into an argument, all because I said, You look good. But let's be honest, the person that started it was me. I didn't have to say all that. You getting old, you can't hear. I didn't have to say all that. All I had to do is turn the radio down and say, Hey, baby, you really look nice. But I ain't feel like doing all that. Why? Because I'm in the flesh. Now it's time for me to preach. I'm in the spirit. 
So we got to make sure our heart is rededicated back to God. Because if you don't rededicate your heart back to God and find something to make you say, Lord, I thank you. If you don't find something on a regular basis, daily basis, to say, Lord, you know, I thank you. I love you. If you don't find something, a, a song don't come on. A, a tree is not blooming. A bird's not singing. And you don't wake up. There's something that'll make you every now and then just throw you, Lord. Mm. Because if you only become a student of the word every Sunday, you're never going to become a disciple of the word every day. What's the problem is, if we just come to church and hear the word and don't become doers of the word, something about that word ought to make you just... Every now and then, a tear ought to come down your face or a smile ought to come on your face. Every now, you, you, you just can't be cool and save at the same time. Every now and then, brownie points ought to go out the window just like, Lord, mm, Lord Jesus. You, Lord, I didn't want to say. You know, I, listen, I look at some of the professors who, uh, who are uh, educators of the Word of God, and they teach and preach the Word of God, and they teach in such a way as though they're in the classroom. And I'm sitting there looking at them, and I said, I know that, I know that Word just felt good to you, but you don't want to let go. You don't want to seem emotional because you think the people are going to judge you. I don't care. When that word get good to you, when you're in the crowd or when you're by yourself, when you're sitting by a stranger or when you're sitting by somebody you know, every now and then you ought to nod your head or something and say, Lord, mm, you saying it, Rip. Go ahead. Something, you got to do something. You got to pet your foot, knock your legs, rock side to side. You know, hit somebody. You, you got to do something when that word get good to you. You just can't. Come on now. Hey. Let me start. <laughs> When I was in the world, it's amazing church folks are now stuck up. Maybe that's a hard word. Stuck up. But in the world, when I went to the club, my music would come on. I can go to Burger King, bob my head. Something going to make me all right there now. But then when I get to church, God's word don't have that same effect on me. Because I don't want nobody to think I'm religious. I don't want nobody to think I'm holy than thou, so I keep my cool, even though I know that word is good. So I'm a secret Christian while in the church. If I'm a secret Christian in the church, I can imagine what I am when I'm in the streets. Nobody know I'm saved in the streets. If I know I can't get a word, I mean, go meet your neighbor, go greet your neighbor, touch your neighbor, high five your neighbor, speak to your neighbor. You'll stay in your little circle right there. You ain't going to go too far because you know you're a private Christian and you don't like, and then you make up and make excuses why you don't go greet nobody. Well, I just don't like nobody touching me. I just don't like people in my space. And people up there telling me they love me and don't even know me. I ain't into that. And the Bible say, show yourself friendly. I'm going to get the first Samuel. The Bible say, show yourself friendly. And you will gain a friend. Isn't it amazing? All, in the streets, everybody know you. At work, everybody know you. But at church, nobody know you. Because you don't want nobody to know your business. And your business ain't all that big. And matter of fact, can I help you with your business? You ain't the only one got that business. The Bible say ain't nothing new under the sun. So whatever you try to be private about, somebody already got that business. Matter of fact, they had that business before you got it. Let me come over here. So you ain't got no private business. No, no. What you got is private sin. Spank it, baby. Come on, 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16. I'm saved for real. 1 Samuel 16. See, when I'm by myself, the way I am here in front of you is how I am by myself. I talk to myself. I laugh at myself. I, I trip out on myself sometimes. I say, boy, you know you're stupid. I tell myself that, boy, you know you're stupid. Boy. Then sometimes I walk down the mall, God, you know you're good. Walking down the street, God, you're so awesome. Driving down the street, Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, help me, Lord. I'm, I'm always trying to get closer to God because if I don't get closer to God, what's going to happen is I'm going to make God dormant. And if I make him dormant, he's always going to be a God of over there and never a God in here. I've always got to find a way to make sure God is in my heart. Let me come up. 
I, why, you, why you sitting by somebody you don't want to say amen? Everybody say amen. amen. Come on, one more time. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. See, this is, the, this is the time I can get you to say amen is right now. Is we all say it together because if I try to get you to say it while I'm preaching, you ain't, you're going to be sitting there looking at me because you got somebody sitting by you and you're scared to say amen. So now listen to this. I have to always try to find a way to make sure God stay in my heart. Some of us got more respect for our marriage than we do for Jesus. You wouldn't dare cheat on your wife or husband. You wouldn't even dare look at it. You know, I was, I was looking at a muscle man the other day. Me and my wife went to Burlington and, uh, the other night, and uh, this guy had muscles. He looked good to me. Not in the way I want to be with him, but he looked good to me to say, I wish I had that, you know. Man, I wish I had that right there. You know, I look down and say, whoa, we ain't got that. But he put in the work. He put in the work to get that. I'm going to put it to work, too. <laughs> That's my work. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry. And so, you know, I cut my eyes at him. Then I cut my eyes at my wife. And, and ladies are so smooth. My wife acting like she was looking at something else. And then when we got to the car, I played it off. I said, I said, did you see that guy that was at the, you know, around the counter, at the counter? She said, the one with the black belt on and the long black <laughs> I said, great day. I know where you saw all that. <laughs> I had to stare up and down. I'm looking, I was like, checking her out, getting jealous. But, but, <laughs> but if, what if, you keep looking at something and make it look good to you. What if something you keep being hanging around is so good to you that you eventually tell God, time out? You have got to always find a way to get closer to Jesus, even when you don't want to. And watch this, even when you think you're already there. You, 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 if you ain't careful, you'll think you're already close to Jesus, and you really may not be. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right, and the end thereof is death. Now watch 1 Samuel 16, verse 6 and 7. Then we're going to start at verse 1. What it says in verse 6 and 7, reader? When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. Ooh, read that verse 7 again. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Ooh, read that verse 7 one more time. But the Lord said to Samuel, yeah. Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So we talked about this is the year of favor. Favor only comes to people who have the heart of God. When you chase God, God chase you. But we're finding ourselves saying we got favor because you got a promotion. We're calling ourselves saying we got favor because you got married. You got favor because you went to a doctor and got a better doctor report than you had when you went in. So we always are contributing things that favor in our favor as though God favored us. And the Bible says God reigned on the just and the unjust. In other words, whether you're a good Christian or a bad Christian, God still bring the sunshine. He still bring the rain. He still bring the, the wind. So what we got to make sure that we don't contribute everything as far as things working in our favor as favor of God. Because you can mess around and think, oh, well, I don't go to church like I should. I don't tithe like I should. I don't pray like I should. I don't serve like I should. I'm not doing the things that the Bible says I should be doing, but I got favor on my life. And if you ain't careful, you'll live with the favor that you do in God. You know what favor is? It's like a stray cat and stray dog. Any of y'all ever fed a stray cat and a stray dog? 
What does straight mean? They came right on back. They're not yours, but they keep coming back because they know you're going to keep feeding them. And that's how some of us do God. We are stray cats. We keep coming back to him because we know what he's going to do for us. It's, it, it blows my mind when people ask me to pray for them who don't come to church. You won't hear me. I'm taking time out to minister and teach you how to be stronger than you've ever been before. And yet, you'll take time out to say, Rib, can you pray for me because I'm sick? Rib, can you come to my house? We're having some problems. Rib, can you? My child is in jail. Can you go to the house, uh, jail house and bail my child out? It's amazing the things you want the church to do for you, but you won't do for Jesus. So we got to be careful that we don't pimp Jesus and he become the prostitute and you the pimp. You got to love him with all your heart, soul, and mind. If he don't do nothing for you, you know he's still God. And if he do everything for you, you know he's still God. If he, if he give your family a big old family, you know he's still God. If he takes some families away, you know he's still God. You got to be consistent in your walk, not inconsistent because things ain't working in your favor. So we are trying to make God be in the things that make us look good. If I look good, I, I mean, I want more money. Yeah, I'm with you, bro. I'm clapping too. I'm, I'm, I'm raising leg and arm and everything. The other day, I owed some bills and didn't have enough money in the bank. I said, Lord, I'm so glad I owed a bill. I'm so glad I ain't got the money in the bank. Now, granted, the flesh was saying, you stupid. But my inner man, it made me get closer to God. Because I didn't have it, I didn't tell God, now, Lord, bless me to get the money to pay this bill. Now I'm making him a pimp, a prostitute, rather. I got to learn how to serve God even when I ain't got no money. I got to learn how to serve God even if I ain't got nobody around me. I'm sad and feeling hurt and lonely. I got to say, God, you're still awesome. So what am I saying is, in order for you to get to that place, you got to find a place to stay in touch with God. If you don't stay in touch with God, then what's going to happen is you're going to get comfortable with your walk, and your walk going to always be distant, and you think it's close. And then when somebody try to come and educate you and tell you how to get closer to God, then what you're going to say is, you can't be judging me. We all make mistakes. We do make mistakes, but somebody God has placed in your life who can show you how to live better than what you live in. Yeah. See, I'm, 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 me and Sister Ellis, we love Jesus before we love you. Let me come over here and say that again. We love Jesus before we love you. And me and Sister Ellis love Jesus more than we love each other. So now, guess what we got? We have greater desires for you than we do for ourselves. We already know we're successful. And we're not talking about how we look. We're not talking about how, where we live. We're talking about in our walk. We know we are successful in God. So guess what we want? We want better for you. So that's why we contribute and distribute our lives and our wisdom into the lives of you because we want you to have better. We want you to know better. We want you to do better. In other words, we want to duplicate ourselves. If you buy a CD, if you buy a CD and another person buys a CD, they bought the same CD. Guess what just happened? They bought a duplicating CD. So in other words, you listen to the same message, the other person listens to the same message, that's the same way we want for your life. We want you to duplicate what we got in our lives. We don't want you to mimic how we dress. We don't want you to copy off what we drive. We want you to copy off what we got on the inside of us. We want you to pay close attention that when you get mad in your marriage, you remember Pastor Ellis. When you want to choke your children out, you remember Pastor Ellis. When you want to kill your mama, and you know that's going on a lot lately? You know children are killing their parents a lot lately? I'm talking about uh, killing. I don't know how else to put it. Killing their they mama and daddies. And don't feel no regret, no remorse. Why? Because you are in my way. And that's why you parents going to have to bind those spirits in your house and quit always trying to put them on time out. You put them in time out and those spirits just building up. You put them in their room by themselves and those spirits in there building up. When you need to be in there binding them devils and grabbing them by the hand, say, come on, let's get on our knees and pray together. I got me some oil. We're going to lay hands on you right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, we're going to pray together. And if we don't want to pray together, I'm going to bind them devils anyway. See, we're not binding devils. 
We just letting stuff happen and talk, call it, go in your room, go to your corner. I'm taking your cell phone from you. I'm taking your mic. I'm taking your boyfriend. I'm taking your girlfriend. But we ain't taking them spirits. That's why I'm telling you how to get closer to God. If you get closer to God, guess what's getting ready to happen? Them spirits got to obey you. That's the, that's the true favor you want right there. That's the true favor you want. When you walk in old, and spirits say, get out the way. They go, Eric. Unclean spirits say, get out the way. Here he come. See, this is how you know you got a spirit of Christ when people curse around you and they know you say this. I'm sorry. They say, I'm sorry. But when people curse around you, they know you just like them. I got quiet. First Samuel again, verse 6 and 7. When they arrived, uh -huh. Samuel saw Eliab and thought, What it say? Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. Yes. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, uh -huh. for I have rejected him. Yes. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. So in this situation right here, King Saul was rejected by God. King Saul did so many things that God was, didn't like. So God was just fed up. So God told the prophet, the priest, the preacher, Samuel, he said, look here, I'm through with homeboy. He's not going to stay king over my people forever. I'm, I'm sick of him. And so God told Samuel, go to Jesse's house. Jesse got seven children. One of them I have ordained to be the future preacher. Now check this out. You got to be careful when you know God told you something today. It don't mean you go today. Just because God gave you a word today, it don't mean that you need to move today. God can give you a word that, that, that's, wait a minute, it sits on isolation for 10 years from now. God told Je uh, Samuel, go to Jesse, go to verse 1, go to verse 1, we'll read it. Verse 1 says what? The Lord said to Samuel. God said to the preacher Samuel. How long will you mourn for Saul? Samuel is crying over Saul who ain't dead, but spiritually he's dead. The preacher, see what I just got through saying to you? The preacher care more about you than you care about yourself. You don't understand. When you come to church, I spend quality time fasting and praying and talking to God on what he want me to feed you with. Because I want you to be better than me. When I leave this earth, I want you to say, my God, just like Pastor Callahan, who's been gone since 2001. Here it is, 2018, 17 years later, and I'm still strong. I still remember what he taught me some many years ago. So I'm trying to put in you what you can do and say, guess what? Pastor Ellis dead and gone, but I still can make it because he taught me about Jesus. I didn't get connected with him. I got connected with Jesus. So here it is. Samuel, the preacher, is crying over Saul because God said, I'm sick of him. I reject him. Why he's still living? Why he's still a king? God said, I reject him. I'm sick of him. No longer will he be a king over my people. And Samuel is over there crying in a corner because he wants Saul to stay king. And God said, I'm sick of him. And then God tells Samuel in verse 1, what? The Lord said to Samuel. What did he say? How long will you mourn for Saul? God asked the preacher a question. How long are you going to stay here? You got work to do. And you up here crying over somebody I've got, I rejected. You got to be careful when you get attached to somebody God threw with. You mess around and get too attached to somebody God threw with. And God asked the man a question. He said, uh, how long are you going to keep crying over this right here? In other words, are you with me or are you with him? You can't choose. You have both of us at the same time. Sometimes we can get too connected to friends and miss God. That question. This boy is connected to Saul. He loves Saul. He's the a, he's a covering for Saul. And God told him, I'm through with Saul. Now, how long are you going to keep crying over spilt milk? Mm. Read. How long will you mourn for Saul? Yes. Since I have rejected him as king over Israel. See, I threw with him. I rejected him. You still crying over him? Fill your, fill your horn with oil. Get yourself up. And be on your way. Yes. I am sending you to Jesse of Beth Bethlehem. I'm sending you somewhere to anoint somebody that used to have the spirit of, of, of me. I'm going to take that spirit and give it to somebody else. Well, can you imagine the pain? Some of y'all, some of y'all, watch this. Some of y'all was invited by somebody that don't go here no more. Oh, somebody that used to go here, oh, you know, they used to invite you all the time. They, they beg you to come to church. They say, oh, you just need to come here, my pastor, and now they gone. And you still here. You want to know why? Because you moved on. 
I still love you. We're still friends. We still talk on the phone. But I realize that this is where I need to come and get fed at. I can't keep following my friends. I got to follow Jesus. Read, read it. Fill your horn with oil. Yes. And be on your way. Yes. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I'm sending you to Bethlehem to Jesse's crib. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. He got seven kids, and I got one of them I want to be, a, be, the, be the king. But Samuel said. But Samuel said. How can I go? Uh-huh. If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. So now the preacher's scared of the king. When people lose Jesus, they turn into a crazy person. When people stop having the anointing, that's why you got to, if you want to keep your sanity, you got to stay in Jesus. Oh, I done thought about killing myself plenty of times. Oh, I done thought about shooting some of y'all. <laughs> Pastor Randy almost got it by mistake the other day. I came down to the church Saturday. I, was it Friday? Friday. I came to the church Friday, and, and, and the alarm wasn't on. What? I went back, got my gun. Choo-choo. I'm look, I said, I'm going to go out here and check it out. All of a sudden, Pastor Randy come running through the door. I open the door. He's standing there. I said, boy. <laughs> boy. We're going to have to look for another first assistant. <laughs> Boy, what? he said, Pastor, I, I, I know the alarm went on, and I know I better hurry up and come back. You, you, better, you knew right. I, I've been itching to pull a trigger, too. <laughs> but Samuel said. What a preacher doing with a gun. <laughs> Why you got that gun tongue? Read, reader. But Samuel said, uh-huh. how can I go? Uh-huh. If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Yeah. The Lord said. What God said. Take a heifer with you. Take, take a. <laughs> <laughs> take an animal with you. And say, I have come to. Alicia second. read that. I didn't read that. Alicia read that. <laughs> Read, read it. Read it again, read it. The Lord said, take an animal with you. <laughs> Somebody visited the church for the first time. Said, what kind of church is this? Right now? What does it say? And say, uh-huh. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Yeah. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And Okay. Now watch this. God is giving him a strategy. God giving him a strategy. I know that King Saul, he's going to try to kill you. Because I don't, I'm not with him anymore. Once my spirit leave a man, then that man become unclean. Now that man is liable to do anything. When God's spirit leaves a person, I don't care how many times they sung, how many times they preach, how much they gave, but if God's spirit leave a man, he's liable to do anything. And so God said to, to the preacher, he said, now don't go, don't go this way, go this way. I'm going to show you how to escape the wrath of, of Saul. Read. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. You still go to that church. You still go to that church. You still go to the New Restoration. Why he changed the name from Philippians to New Restoration? You still go there. Child, I remember when. I remember when. See, it's amazing when people lose their authority and anointing, they want to come up against what God, where God is. You got to be careful when you come up against what God has established. Just because you don't like it anymore don't mean God ain't, don't love it. That's why I tell people, be careful when you put your mouth on a preacher. Even though that preacher wrong, don't you put your mouth on him. He's still in position. Let God handle that position. Don't you test that pastor. Read. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. Yes. And I will show you what to do. And I'm going to show you what to do when you bring that preacher, that you young boy, to the sacrifice. Read. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. You're going to lay your hands on the one that I choose. See, look at what God say. Who I choose. You don't want to marry somebody that you choose. I want to marry who God choose. Because if God choose that person, even if we fall out, we know God put us together. Read. Samuel did what the Lord said. God, Samuel did what God said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, uh-huh. the elders of the town trembled when they met him. Because, see, they got, they, they got scared of that preacher. You want to know why they got scared of him? Because he reminded them of Pastor Ellis. <laughs> You know, I go around and ask people sometimes. I say, what do you think about me? Well, man, you don't play, man. You hard. And I'm like, oh, oh, no, no, I'm not. I love to play. I, I like to have a good time. I just can't help I turn into Superman when I start preaching. 
I tell the truth. I'm Clark Kent, but I'm Superman when I start preaching. I'm serious about this thing called salvation. I'm going to heaven for real. I can't help that I tell the truth. I may tell it a little harder than normal. Some people say, you're messing up now. You need to stop. I slap you in the face and tell you're messing up. That's just my nature. But I'm not mean. I'm, I, just, I love people. I love to be around people. And I can't get it when people leave me because I really love people. Read what he says. When he arrived at Bethlehem, yes. the elders of the town trembled when they met him. So they got scared. Every time he came in town, they got scared because they said, oh, Lord, here come that preacher. I know what he's getting ready to say. Read. They ask. What? Do you come in peace? Do you come in peace? Samuel replied. What did the preacher say? Yes, in peace. Uh -huh. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Yes. Consecrate yourselves uh -huh. and come to the sacrifice with me. So Samuel tells the people, he said, now set yourself aside and clean yourself up and come to the sacrifice. And don't even know God getting ready to make a new king. Read. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons uh -huh. and invited them to the sacrifice. Invited Jesse and all his six boys. Now he has seven, but Jesse only brought out six. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. He got seven sons, but Jesse only brought out six of them. Sometimes your own family don't acknowledge you as somebody. Some of your family don't even acknowledge you. I got a huge family, but they refuse to come up here and see me. They refuse to even watch me on the internet. They refuse to ask me to come and talk to and have fun and come to family reunions. And it hurts, but guess what? I got a new family. I got a new family. Read, Rita. When they arrived. When they got there. Samuel saw Eliab and thought. Samuel saw Eliab, six foot four, 225 pounds, slender with muscles, long hair, Nice eyelashes. <laughs> Pastor, what you been looking at? <laughs> the boy walked like he's a soldier. He bow-legged and strutting. And the preacher saw him and said, Wow! That's got to be the man God choosing right there. That boy, that bad. Because he's taller than everybody. He talk. What's up? <laughs> what does it say, Rita? That's what, you ain't read your Bible. Y'all better read your Bible. It's in there. What does it say, Rita? When they arrived. What verse you in? Verse 6. Verse 6 says what? When they arrived, yeah. Samuel saw Eliab and thought. The preacher saw Eliab and said to himself. Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. That boy, that right there, right there, right there. That boy, that fine. He got to be who God chooses. He looked like a soldier. He looked like husband material. Looked like a wife. That's what I want right there. You know, I was, with, I was, at, I was sitting next at a table with a couple, and I, and I lived this scripture yesterday, last night, at the banquet. I'm sitting there, and this guy sitting next to me, he about my height, handsome, tall, you know, talked very good, very professional, you know. And I was like, man, you know, where your wife? He said, right there. I couldn't picture him with her. And I said, how long y'all been married? Oh, eight, 14 years. My God, this, this woman been the best thing for me. I love this girl. And I said, hmm. <laughs> I judged her based on how he looked. He looked too good for her. How wrong was I? When this boy got through preaching to me, I repented to myself, in myself, to my God. Father, I'm sorry because this is your creation. Everybody can be loved. It don't make no difference what color you are, how, how thick you are, how skinny you are, how long your hair is, how short your hair is. Everybody can be loved. But the problem is, I don't think she's right for you because of my eyes. Watch what it says. Surely, when they arrived, yes. Samuel saw Eliab and thought, What did he say? Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. Surely, surely, that's the preacher. Surely God with that boy right there. Surely. Can I bless you? Pastor, Pastor uh, Randy and, and Bruinton, they, they weren't my pick. 
Let me come over here. Randy and Bruinton was not my pick to be assistant pastors to me. I said, no, no, Lord, no, not them, not them. I already know who I got. I know who I want. And who I wanted left the church. I said, oh, that person's smart, they're intelligent, they're nice looking, they're a family man. Oh, that's the one right there. They left the church, got mad and left the church. And I'm looking at the, the other two, and I'm like, no, uh-uh, they're not, my, they're not my type. We don't talk on the phone, we don't hang out, we don't go out to breakfast, we don't call to check on each other, they don't come open the door for me. I ain't studying them. <laughs> and when I got through praying, I said, Lord, show me who you want to be the assistant to me, Bruinton and Randy. Lord, show me again. <laughs> See, you got to understand something. If you keep picking based on what it looked like, yeah. you're going to miss what it's going to be like. Oh, he's not my type. Oh, no, she's not my type. Can I bless you? I wasn't Sister Ellis' type. And Sister Ellis wasn't my type. I always grew up wanting a red bone. Where the brothers at? Wait a come on, brothers. Don't raise your hand, just raise your heart. Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. <laughs> Don't talk too, too far. Man. That Jamaican back there. She understand? I always wanted red bone. I said, man, red, I'm, I'm going red bone all my life. <laughs> nothing lighter than, nothing darker than me can't be around me. <laughs> but then I met my wife. Fell in love. I said, Lord, this ain't what I want. And even right now today, I look at her and say, Lord, I always wanted a red bone. I said, but Lord, this has been good for me. I love this little chocolate world. I thank God for what I got. Because, see, if you ain't careful, you'll want what looks good to you. And you won't choose and let God choose what's going to be good for you. When your tail gets sick, she's going to be there for you. When you get broke, she'll pull a little money out of her 401k and bless you with it because she's going to be there for you. But Redbone going to tell you, we ain't got no more money. <laughs> Everybody looking at red bones. <laughs> Everybody looking around for red bone. Wait a minute. <laughs> you ain't messing with a broke. <laughs> Let's go home. I'm sorry. Somebody say, arrive. somebody say he preaching. He ain't preaching. They got my chocolate right there. Yes, sir. Where, 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 where we at? When they arrive, verse 6. Verse 6 again. 1 Samuel 16, verse 6. We're going home. When they arrived, yeah. Samuel saw Eliab and thought. Samuel saw six foot four, bow legged, nice looking, long hair, Fabio looking man with muscles. Smelled good with the right cologne. Strutted inside the camp. Look like he'll beat up everything that's walking. <laughs> you know, that good looking man, you got that little the slight pat pigeon toe, you know. <laughs> Somebody say, Pastor, you've been watching me in too long. <laughs> I'm having fun. I don't care what you think about me. Read, read Samuel saw Eliab and thought. What did he say? Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. So the preacher said, that's the man right there. But the Lord said to Samuel. But, but God had to correct the preacher. God had to tell the preacher, you are looking out of your eyes. You ain't looking out of your spirit. You're watching too much out of what looks good. Watch what he says. Do not consider his appearance. Do not. Look what God told the preacher. Do not look at how good he looks. Or his height. And how tall he is. For I have rejected him. He ain't even got out of the blocks. He, all he did was just was born, and now all of a sudden he's he 22 years old, and God said, I don't want him. Because I already know his future. 
You want to know how I became a pastor? <clears throat> because God knew my future. If God, God knew my heart, I didn't know me. I knew I couldn't pastor. I knew I wasn't eloquent. I knew I wasn't a person that liked to stand in front of people. I know that I'm a person that don't know the Bible that well. But God chose me not because of my intellect. He chose me because of my heart. If you will take care of my people, if you take care of your wife, you take care of your children, and then you go to the prison and take care of the prisoners, I know what you would do for my church. That's why God chooses people. He ain't choosing people that think they're something. He choosing people that say, I ain't worthy. I, I can't do this. I remember when I sat down, when I sat down with Pastor Randy, me and my wife went out to dinner because I think that's the first time they ever invited me out to dinner. So I went out to dinner with Pastor Randy, ate some crab legs. We sitting there just having fun talking. I said, yes, uh, I said, the Lord told me to make you my senior assistant pastor. And Randy kept on eating. He wanted to say, stop playing. <laughs> but since I was the pastor, he, 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 he knew that was just too much joking, so he didn't want to go there. He just said, huh? Kept eating. He just bust out laughing. And he looked at my wife. My wife's like, yeah. Randy's appetite was gone. He didn't want to eat. I'm sitting there tearing up all the food. Randy, was, he couldn't eat no more. He don't even like to go to the mall. He told his wife, let's go to the mall. Let's go to the mall. I got to go walk this off. I don't believe what I just heard. He couldn't believe that God would choose him to be an assistant pastor to me. He didn't see that coming. And then he didn't think he was worthy. And then kind of wanted to shy away and then don't tell nobody. Y'all be quiet. Don't tell nobody. But now, when you know what God is calling you to do, you step into it, regardless of how you feel. I don't never feel like preaching. I really don't. I don't I hate it. When I'm sitting over there, oh, my God, I got butterflies. I'm scared because I know I got to feed y'all. But, man, let me tell you something. When I get up here, them butterflies gone because I know I got to do what I got to do. That's who God looking for, not people who are running to this. People were saying, oh, no, no, you can't. I ain't worthy for this right here. And God said, I see your heart. Just because you can talk good don't mean you're going to be good. I know a lot of educated folks trying to be a pastor because they're smart but dumb in God. And I know a lot of people who can't even talk that good. One of them named Moses. Moses can't even talk. Moses stuttered when he talked. And God called Moses. He didn't even call Aaron. He called Aaron and said, yes, Lord, I have a degree. I'm a Ph.D. What would you like for me to do? I'd like for you to follow Moses. <laughs> Actually, Aaron said, but, but he can't talk. But you're going to talk for him. Moses, yet, Lord, what do you want, Jesus? I want you to lead my people. Who, 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 me? I can't talk. But Moses, I know your heart. I ain't caring about your handicap. You keep looking at how low you look, and you don't see what I see. I see your heart. I ain't worried about your handicap. I ain't worried about what color you are, what sex you are. That's what you worried about. You worried about what the people are going to think. But I call you. Do what I call you to do. Quit wrestling with what I call you to do. You're trying to find a reason not to do it, and I'm kind of telling you, you got to do it. Yeah. Watch what it says. Do not consider his appearance or his height, uh -huh. for I have rejected him. Yeah. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. Uh -huh. People look at the outward appearance. People look at how good you look. Watch what else it says. But the Lord looks at the heart. But God says, I'm looking at what's going to be with me. Favor only come on people who have the heart of God. When you chase God, God chase you. And if you don't have the favor of God on your life, and you feel like you're not in love with God like you should, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, I think around the 5th chapter, it says, 13th chapter, verse 5, it says, examine yourself. In other words, sit down and look at yourself and ask yourself a set of questions. Am I closer today than I was yesterday with God? How close do I want to get with him? I'm, I'm, no, no, don't you can't tell me you ain't enjoying life. I'm enjoying life too. 
oh, yeah, I'm enjoying life. I enjoy some stuff, and, you know, and there's some stuff I still want to do that I can't do, that I shouldn't do, that I ain't going to do, that I will do. You understand what I just said? <laughs> Paul said, when I would try to do good, evil is always present. So I got an enemy that's always fighting me. I got my mind made up. I'm going to love everybody and then get, get on the road of 440. I want to run over somebody. Yes, <laughs> Where all these people come from? The road's getting crowded now. I'm getting angry now. I'm getting impatient now. I'm riding on people's tail now. Back in the day, back in 1999 and, and 2001, and I'm cruising, enjoying trees. Oh, look at the trees. Oh, that's a pretty tree right there. Now I'm on people's tail. Get out the way! You're supposed to be cruising in your car. Now you need a little transmission because you're going too fast. <laughs> I find myself about to lose it. I can't stand too long to be around slow, ignorant people. I'm getting old now. I ain't as sensitive as I used to be. My patience are short. I'm getting mad faster. I'm getting upset easy. Things that I said I wouldn't do, I find myself doing them. I used to pick at people that were old and mean. When I was in my 20s, I laughed at them. Look at the old man. Oh, he's so mean. And I ain't said it like that, but, you know, I said some stuff. Now here I am, that getting close to that age now. Things bothering me. Now I got to fight harder now because I'm getting closer to the grave. I got to fight harder now. Gravity is pulling on me. I was running up the steps in my house the other day. I was running up the steps, you know, whoo! Got to the top, I said, oh, my God. When I first moved into the house, I was a cheetah. Now I'm an elephant. <laughs> I get to the top of the steps, I have to sit there and wrestle. I was carrying some clothes up the steps yesterday, and, and I felt gravity pulling me. I grabbed the banister and pulled back. <laughs> Come on, people, things changing. I looked in the mirror and I saw my face that used to sit up strong and now it's sagging. Gravity pulling on me. And sin is too. Sin pulling on me. The world pulling on me. I got to fight a little harder than I used to. Now I got some wisdom I can share with young folks and tell them, you ain't got to do that, do that no more. Let me tell you how to fight through that. I can tell married couples, let me tell you how to fight through that. You got to have a heart for God. Quit trying to get be justified and be right and be righteous. Pastor, I need to tell you what they did. No, no, don't tell me what they did. What they did was wrong, but how you live in this power. The Bible said, what is it for you to take wrong and live? That boy said he looked good. God said, but he ain't good. He looked good on the outside, but he's terrible on the inside. He's going to be good to marry. You're going to be a good photo op. You're going to take nice pictures and have beautiful babies. But he's going to beat you and cheat on you. You want to get counsel before you get deep. Because the hard question is going to come out in counsel. But if you just jump in a relationship with somebody and don't get counsel, then what's going to happen is you're going to mess around and get beat up. And then you're trying to wait on Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright been right in front of your face all these years. My sister getting ready to get married. She wanted me to do her wedding in June. All these men she was dating, all these men, she dated all different men, not a whole bunch. She might be watching now. Hey, Vicky. And, uh, <laughs> but she dated different guys. And I would give her counsel sometime on some of the guys. And now she ended up by herself. And then she finally found this guy. He found her. He'd been knowing her for 15 years. 15 years he'd been knowing her. And he saw her with her raggedy clothes on. Her hair was messed up. And, and he said, God spoke to him and said, that's the one right there. She wasn't dressed up in her Sunday best. She just got out of the chicken coop place. Fixing, she cut chickens and sell chickens up at the chicken, you know, that chicken, Tyson chicken. She worked for the big manufacturer. This burnt down. Matter of fact, she got a three-month vacation. So anyway, <laughs> she worked for Tyson chicken and messed around. And she coming out of there with all that cold stuff on, trying to stay warm. And she looking all raggedy, no makeup on. Got on her do-rag and hat on, turned sideways. And she walking out, and homeboy saw her. He said, the Lord told him, said, that's the one right there. Marry her right there. 
He said, but Lord, I've been knowing her for 15 years. He said, now that's the one. Then she messed around and said, she, he came to her and told her, he said, the Lord told me you're the one. And she looked, she said, I've been knowing you for 15 years. She said, yeah, but you're the one. Now they get ready to get married. <laughs> you won't even marry the one that's right in front of your nose because you're so busy looking for Denzel. Denzel already married. And the rock just had a baby. He ain't trying to give you one. And I'm taking. <laughs> I ain't trying to get no little something on the side. I ain't trying to get that word that she read earlier. Animal. <laughs> the brothers are coming. Let's go home. If you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to join this ministry. We're not like this all the time, but I just felt good just to be relaxed and just talk freely. Anybody learn something today? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We just, we just like to have a little good time. Next Sunday, now next Sunday, you nine o'clockers, <laughs> next Sunday we're going to have a combined service. Next Sunday it's going to start at 10 o'clock. So we're going to have uh, uh, something different next Sunday. We're going to call it the... Uh, Light of the world Sunday. Next Sunday is light of the world. What that means is I want you to wear something outrageously bright. You know that thing that you've been looking at in your closet for years? You finally get to wear it now. Now don't wear a three-piece, two-piece bright light. Don't, don't wear that. Just wear a shirt, something bright shirt, a bright hat, or bright shoes or something if you want to. Maybe some bright pants, maybe. But next Sunday, we're having a dress-down day, and we're having family and friends day, so we're having uh, barbecue chicken, barbecue ribs, uh, fish, hot dog, hamburger. Where my slush? My ice, my ice cream coming? <clears throat> you got another engagement? You got two ice cream machines? And your point is? Oh, you're doing a barbecue festival on Saturday and Sunday? Oh, I thought I was your pastor. No, I'm just playing. I'm just messing with you. 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 you know, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. Well, we're going to have to find another ice cream man. Or either we just buy a box of ice cream and sell it to you. But all the food free. We're going to have a good time. we got bounce houses. We're going to have bounce houses for the kids. And we're going to have tents. And, and um, you can bring your, your lawn chair. And we're just going to have a good time outside, man. Just have a grand time. So that'll be next Sunday, next Sunday at 10 o'clock. We're going to have one service next Sunday at 10 o'clock. So bring your family, bring your friends, bring your enemy. And so we won't be in church uh, to probably about 1130, get out about 1130, and then just go out and enjoy it. Because you can see right now it's 1030, and that sun is bright out there, boy. I'm, I'm too pretty to get burnt. I'm just playing. Yes, ma'am. My wife, my chocolate want to say something. Yes, ma'am. It would have been good if one of the brothers would have ran and got her a mic because people on the internet watching. No, no, don't start over. We're going to come in and dress up in palm and gray, and we're going to have a pastor speaking here. Her name is uh, Pastor Brown from Beaumont, Beaumont, Texas. She's going to be here on Saturday to carry on and finalize our event. So we ask all the women to please participate. The cost for the banquet is going to be at the Renaissance off Six Fort Road, and the cost is going to be $40. So we ask that you get prepped and prepared and get ready to participate. And if you want to pay for your event right away, today or tomorrow and whenever before September the 21st, uh, you can put it right here on the envelope and just say, uh, and others, put Women Conference, okay? All if right. you have any question, please see me or Sister Lacey. Anna, Lacey, can you please stand, no, please? No, that's enough. That's enough. We, see, we heard your name, sir. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll stand. I'm just messing with you. 
So don't forget the women come for September 21st. Outstanding. The lady that did the movie set it off with Queen Latifah and all of them. Uh, she's going to be one of the main speakers. And then Takeda Brown is going to preach that Sunday morning. Uh, her husband was my best friend. He passed away many years ago. And so she's doing an outstanding job up there in Beaumont, Texas. All right. If you want to be a part of this church with my rule set, come over here and see uh, Pastor Bruin. The way I saw Pastor Bruin. He gone? All right, Jerry, come on over here, Jerry. Send over there next to Alicia. If you want to be, yes, ma'am. Hurry up, hurry up. Get the mic. I'm in September. In September, we're going to be um, hosting a garden class. It's going to be on Saturday mornings. It will be a four- or five-week class. Uh, it's going to be like three hours on Saturday morning, so we seconds. hope that you can come. So please make sure you sign up for that, and I'll have more information soon. Thank you. Have All right, day. bye. <laughs> now, I, with my rude self, so much, I ain't joining this church now. He, he said, "Will it now?" No, no, that's, we're in a hurry to go home. Bye. <laughs> you want, if you want to join, come over here and see Jerry and, and Alicia.